This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. As you know, I've been working with SwiftUI since it came out a few years ago. But up until now, there are times when you can't really do everything what you'd like to do. I'm going to give you three examples in this tutorial um, to answer the question. What if you can't do something you'd like to do with SwiftUI, but nevertheless use SwiftUI? So we're going to have a look at these few examples here. Um, for example, here the, the scroll view um, with pagination that we can use. That is actually created uh, purely in SwiftUI. But when it comes to customization, and this is why I have the black background here, it's going to get a little bit more tricky. Um, and I'm going to give you a second example where we have a lot more possibility to actually customize the pagination um, coming from the indicator and also um, the other dots um, that we have for the different pages. Uh, and we're also going to talk about some adjustments that are really hard to do in uh, SwiftUI. For example, uh, what if you actually don't want the bouncy effect of a scroll view? What if you'd like to uh, just scroll and have no, no, none of these uh, effects that you get actually for free, but there are times when you want to make certain adjustments. And what about the translucent tab bar that once looked like this and sometimes uh, I also want to have this look even if there is no underlying color. So these are adjustments that you can't really make um, purely with uh, the standards out of the box Swift UI that you get. And we're going to have um, a look at two packages, two Swift packages um, that you can find on GitHub. First, uh, it is introspect for Swift UI and the second one is Swift UI. X. Um, in the case of introspect for SwiftUI, this is a cool library um, that allows you, what it says here, um, to get the underlying UI kit or app kit element of a Swift UI view and make certain customizations. And this works well for all the um, implemented elements that we have here, like a scroll view, a list, and so on. And it does not work for text, image, and button. Um, this is going to work um, using iOS 15. This worked with iOS 14, but there is no guarantee that it is still going to work uh, with upcoming uh, OS releases. It is not a private API. It only inspects the view hierarchy using publicly available um, functions and methods. And uh, so you're on the safe side if you want to go with your app into production. And SwiftUI X kind of complements um, the SwiftUI library um, so that you can add, for example, something like this pagination uh, scroll view with a little more ease. This video's sponsor is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people like you. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. They offer classes designed for real life and all the circumstances that come with it. They are short and to the point and can easily fit into a tight schedule. I'm following one class at the moment that I find extremely helpful when it comes to app design. It covers the benefits of using and create effective design systems to make design work easier, faster and better. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And we're going to have a look at these examples now in our tutorial project, um, which is really um, just a tab view that has three views in it. The first view the second view and the third view. These are just some views that I've created for us uh, to explore uh, introspect in Swift UI X. Um, and we're going to go through all of them in a second, but let me just quickly show you how uh, pagination works when you're just using pure Swift UI. Um, so uh, we have uh, a first view, of course. The first view contains a scroll view and a lazy age stack so that we can actually move around here in horizontal direction. 
And um, in this lazy H stack, what I've put here is another view that I call paging scroll view. And this is nothing else but a tab view again, that has a specific style, which is a page tab view style that gives us the pagination behavior that we actually want with the pagination dots and so on. And so I did some customization here, used a for each block uh, to create uh, several, um, uh, several elements here, which are just text elements um, that we can actually page through um, with the um, current index uh, from the for each block. Um, and this is kind of the implementation that we have for a paging scroll view uh, using pure Swift UI. But as I said, it is kind of difficult to now customize the look of, uh, for example, the dots or get the initial value um, so that we can start on the third page or not with the first and so on. Um, and we're going to start with Swift UI X to actually make this a little bit easier. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is right click on my project here and first of all, add a package or add packages. Um, and I've already added Swift UI introspect and Swift UI X before. Uh, but if you haven't, then you can just paste the um, GitHub URLs right there. I'm going to put them in the video description below as well. Uh, but now I can actually select Swift UI X here first and add this package. It's going to download all the necessary dependencies. Um, and then we're going to uh, just do the same thing again, um, using Swift um, introspect, Swift UI introspect, and add these, uh, this package as well. Um, now with that done, we can have a look at our content view again and replace the um, second view where it just put some text and there's also um, a state variable that holds the current page. And with our pagination view that we get from Swift UI X, uh, we can actually directly initialize that here um, using, for example, a data object, or in my case, I'm just going to um, create some 15 elements or 16 elements um, using um, uh, their hash value as an ID. And then we have the index in our closure. Uh, and then we can just add, for example, a text like page using string interpolation and the index here. Um, and then we have actually achieved the same thing um, that we did with the a little bit more complicated approach of a paging scroll view, putting that into a lazy uh, H stack, putting it into a scroll view again. So a very nice complement to what Swift UI already offers. Um, and now if we, just want to uh, do a little bit more customization, which I said isn't as easy um, using the pure Swift UI approach. Like for example, change the current page index. So we can just pass along a binding to our uh, current page state variable. We can go to page four, for example. Can also change the alignment, set that to top, for example. Uh, we can change the indicator tint color. Uh, which we're going to set to blue, and also the current page indicator tint color, which I'm going to set to yellow. So if we now resume our project here in the on the canvas, um, and we go on our to our second example right here, then you can see that we're actually starting on current page four, um, and that we can just move through. Um, these pages here could do a little bit more adjustment of the positioning and so on. Um, but the page indicator is on the top, um, indicator color is blue tint color, and uh, the current page indicator is yellow. So very simple approach um, and very easy to do with um, Swift UI X. And now let's have a look at um, the third page where we actually have um, just a few color elements. And as you can see, these are kind of bouncing um, like you would expect from a scroll view or a table view, for example. But as I said, sometimes you want a little bit more um, customizability or you want the option to deactivate things like that as you did with UI kit. And here we can use Swift introspect or Swift UI introspect. Um, and the way it works is very simple. 
Um, so as I said earlier, you get the underlying UI kit element. So what we do is we want to adjust the scroll view um, in our third view. So I'm just going to add a modifier here and calling uh, introspect scroll view. And we're not going to need the content of the uh, parentheses here. Um, so we're just going to add some curly braces and then using um, just add, as we would with a, a map function dollar sign zero uh, to access the element that we get here, which is our scroll view. And then we can, for example, um, deactivate bounces by just setting this to false. Um, and this is how easy it is actually um, to modify something um, using Swift introspect. Uh, and I'm going to show you the result now in a second as soon as our canvas has refreshed. So when we go to example three, as you can see, there is no more bouncing, uh, just deactivate that right here, very simply, just using Swift UI and Swift UI introspect. Now, as I said earlier, um, we can also deal with things like um, the translucent tab bar. What if we actually want the behavior of an opaque tab bar back, because this is what our design requires for uh, some reason. So if you want to achieve that, uh, we can simply go up here um, to our tab view in my content view. Um, and I'm going to use introspect um, the um, tab bar right here, the tab bar controller. Uh, and this time what I can also do is using the controller right here so that we can make some modifications, creating a bar right here using UI tab bar uh, appearance and then configure our bar with an opaque background. And once I have my UI tab bar appearance and my configuration ready, I can use my controller that I get in this closure and use the tab bar and use scroll edge appearance and set this to bar. And this is going to work a little bit better in this simulator. And as you can see, uh, we have the standard opaque background back, um, even in the other tabs right there. Um, and these were now just three examples. Um, when it is really useful to have a look at these two um, packages uh, that can help you if you can solve something uh, that you'd like to do with Swift UI. I hope you found this little tip helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.